Welcome to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And now, your host and mine, Trevor Duvall. crowd goes wild. We are back, my friends out there in internet radio land, with episode 17 of Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests. I am your intrepid host, Trevor DeVal. Um, so... Our last episode was 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 with Mr. Colin Murdoch, and it went, went smashingly. Um, uh, our, uh, our next episode today is with a, uh, another lovely young man who we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but before we do, um, just to let you know that this could be the last episode for about a month or so, because I am off to explore the globe once again. I'm off to uh, Geneva and Rome and London. Um, so I'll sort of be back and forth f uh, for the next month. But I'm going to try and get our next episode up and running at some point uh, between the times that I'm in Europe and in Canada and back and forth and blah, 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 blah. So keep a stiff upper lip and all that, my friends. The show will not go into podcast hell. Or what are they called? Fade. Pod fade, I think they call it. I think that's the terminology, but I, I don't really understand the terminology very well. Anyway... The point is, I will be here. The show will continue to be here. Now, just a little reminder. Many, 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 many moons ago, I uh, had a little contest going. Uh, and that contest um, was all about uh, uh, getting you guys to help me promote the show. Now, over the course of the past year or so, Voice Sprint has, has gained in popularity uh, exponentially. And it's been great. And there's now, like, Thousands of people all over the world to listen to the show, and that's awesome. But the contest is still on. And what the contest is, is if you can show me how you've successfully, or maybe not so successfully, tried to promote the show, um, basically you send in your evidence to me, your evidence of your promotion, and if I think it's cool or great or helpful or whatever, uh, I then send you an autographed copy of a CD with all the voice brand episodes on it and all the uh, signatures of all the guests except maybe for Vic because he's in Texas. <laughs> but that's the deal. So to give you an example of this, um, there was a, a listener out there by the name of Zero who's just got himself his own radio show and he did a little promotion and I want to play you the clip <laughs> from his show. So here it is. There's two. There's another thing I want to address while I'm at it too, because I feel kind of guilty about it, and I won't feel any better unless I actually address it. And oh. also because this is what? It's like you're having some secret confession. Like, forgive me, Father, I have sinned. Okay, fine. I'll admit it. It's a shameless plug-in, so I can enter a contest for a thing online. <laughs> but and it, <laughs> it's it's innocent enough. It's not going to infringe on the show. In any case, though, um, last week I sort of opened the show out of desperation because I wasn't sure what to say. I said, you know, I am your intrepid host, uh, Colin Pote. I just got to admit right out that was ripped off from a podcast I listen to on a fairly regular basis. <gasps> oh, gasp. I was, I was trying to think of a good way to open, and I just came to that. It's, it's voice print with Trevor DeVal, who's a Canadian voice actor. I listen to that podcast all the time, and when I was trying to think of a good way to open the show, it just really shot back to what he does. So thank you, Trevor DeVal, for getting me my first show's opening. How dare you? How dare you, sir? Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. After all, I'm mentioning his uh, podcast on public radio. That's a voice print with Trevor DeVal at TrevorDeVal.com. Right now he's like in his room crying, eating haagen -Dazs. It's not enough. <laughs> I need more subscribers. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Um, I have a decent show for you today, I hope. There's just not enough haagen dust in the world. Uh, well, thank you very much, Zero. That was cool. And and now I must be famous because I'm on public radio. <laughs> uh, anyway, keep doing that kind of wacky and crazy stuff. Zero, let me tell you, for that submission, for that 
aid and promotion, you are in the running for that signed CD. So I issue the challenge to all the rest of you. Try and top that. Y'all try and top that. Anyway, brrr, we're going to move on with the show now. Episode 17. I have in my studio today, and not in the closet, mind you. The, the closet is a thing of the past. It's, it's looking almost like a proper studio. He's looking at the closet now thinking, oh my God, he's not going to stick me in there, is he? <laughs> we have a very special guest with us today. And uh, uh, as is our, our tradition, a fine uh, time on a tradition, I'm going to introduce him uh, via his work. So here is a small clip of our guest today. Hey, hmm? what's the story with this liger? This one? We call it Liger Zero. Liger Zero, huh? A cheap dealer conned my dad and tricked him into buying it. And no one can pilot it properly. No one knows how? They say this Zoid is really temperamental. It goes berserk as soon as someone steps in the cockpit. Hmm. Wait! I appreciate the food and blanket, but how about untying me here so I can get some sleep? You mean so you can steal some parts while we've got our backs turned on you? Come on, what do you take me for? You just gave me a nice hot meal. I'm not gonna turn around and rip you off now. Even thieves like me have a sense of honor. Whatever. Ugh. We'll let you go tomorrow. See ya. Hey, come on! <sighs> At least I tried. As the music swells, I introduce to you the one, the only, Richard Ian Cox. Hello! Hello! How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for indulging me by sitting and listening to that uh, rabble of mine, that babble rabble of babble rabble of no, mine. No, it's great, I like it. I just, you know, it gets me uh, all excited and inspired to do the show. Whoa, like no. I've said, I've got this microphone in front of me just begging to be spoken into <laughs> and filled with rubbish and drivel, <laughs> well, which will be from me and the oh, no, brilliant think, uh, and... <laughs> insightful questions will be from you. Yes, well, that's what we hope for, but <laughs> have never achieved so far. <laughs> so do you recognize that clip, buddy? Chance? I do, yeah. It's uh, from Zoid. Zoid. Yeah, yeah BitCloud yeah. from Zoid. That's right. Or uh, BitClude. Uh, BitClude? <laughs> <laughs> Depending on where you're from on the globe. <laughs> uh, it's the, the Scottish people out there, you know. <laughs> that's not what his name is. It's BitClude. <laughs> I don't, don't know what you're talking about. Don't, don't they know how to pronounce words there? What a stupid okay. name. <laughs> Zoids with BitCloud. <laughs> <laughs> we do love our Scottish friends. Oh, they're very funny. <laughs> very funny. So, yes, that was uh, from Zoids. Now, yeah. I was trying to find a clip from the one, the big show. I mean, yeah. you've, done a, you've done a couple of big shows. Sure. But... There's one we get asked about all the time, or you mm -hmm. get asked about all the time. And it's yeah. like, they, a lot of the fans, they ask me about you, yeah. about this show, yeah. which of course is Inuyasha. Right. But I couldn't find a clip. Almost um, the same voice, I think you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> it's the attitude. It's playing the character. It, it really it's is. It's not the voice. It's the, it's the acting. It's, it's the character. We like to say it's not the voice. It's the hammer pants. <laughs> <laughs> really pull Mr. Inuyasha again. Well, let's uh, let's have a look at uh, not only uh, your illustrious history with um, uh, your illustrious work with Inuyasha, but also some of the other things you do. Let's go to our trusted IMDb list and let's talk about your history. And now, voice print with Trevor Deval and guests presents In Memoriam. A history of our guests' long and faithful service to the cause of voice acting. Very funny. <laughs> yes, it's all over for you, Richard Cox. <laughs> you've you've sunk to funny. the level of having to do voice print. No. You, your career Listen, is over. <laughs> I need a voice like yours. I need something out of the range of my nasally, whatever's above uh, alto. I, I, I need a... Deep, rumbling baritone, that's, which I can't get that's to. That's nice, see? You know, oh, you, you have a great voice. I love your voices. Your voice, it's great. Well, you uh, have a perfect well, voice. Well, thank you. Thank no, it's you. wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah, we were doing a show yeah. just uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah. last week or something, right. uh, Geronimo Stilton, mm -hmm. and we were both playing, among others, there was these two little characters. That's right. They're the sailors, these yeah, sure. the sailors guys. And um, how did it work out? We were, we were both doing the characters, mm -hmm. and... You had done like a deep guy, but you kept, you kept saying <laughs> that it was as I could go. Yes, <laughs> and I thought it was lovely. I did. I wanted to stay away from that guy. 
You get a little lower. <laughs> Stay away from that guy. You're coming off a mic. That doesn't mean you need to crouch, Richard. Lower means in your voice. Bring your range down lower. Oh, I don't understand. Okay, how's this? That's excellent. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, bring in the castrati. It's wonderful. One bad trip in Austria. And boom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's yeah. uh, let's have a look at some of the, stuff, the, the stuff we've got from IMDb here now. Okay, okay. Yeah. As everybody who listens to the show knows that IMDb is um, hit and miss at best. Yeah, it's always correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the first one they have listed here is yeah. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn mm-hmm. of War 2. Sure. Uh, in post-production. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dawn of War 2, so that would be the obviously the sequel to Dawn yeah, of War. Yeah, well, absolutely, you know, yeah. Yes, it is. It's doing... hard to get the voice things in those tiny little figures uh, <laughs> to talk. They're so small, and sometimes the paint can get in there and ruin them. Yes, I know, because <laughs> when I'm painting my midis, it's very difficult to maintain the integrity of these things. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun to do, actually, between that one and the first one, just uh, you know, having the folks over from the U.K. and mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> doing these great sort of uh, wonderful voices. and it was, a, it was a lot of fun. That's a uh, one in a long line of Warhammer games mm-hmm. that they've yeah, done because yeah, they've yeah, done yeah. a whole bunch. I think they did three Dawn of Wars before. Yeah, I did. I think the second expansion. Right, right. Um, then they did the Warhammer Fantasy ones that we did. Right. Um, but I remember talking with a lot of the guys who were on. Were you doing Mark of Chaos? That was one of the fantasy ones. I don't think so. I think I was, you know, uh, I think I was the first of the new generation because I think they'd done something prior. I could be right. totally off base here, but my understanding was that they had done something a while ago, and then this was sort of the new sort of foray into it. And I oh, remember I doing the first of that, and right. then I did. I didn't do a bunch of the expansions <clears throat> or the other ones, and then I did, you know, this this one. Right. But this one, how was this on the voice? Because I know a lot of those Warhammer uh, games were were you know, voice. It was records. screechy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, some of them were like, yeah, I can't remember the characters, but they were very sort of, you know, ethereal and up there, and it was right. all right, and it was fine. But then, yeah, those guys started. <laughs> and I remember doing one, and one of the producers, I did an ad lib on it. And uh, one of the producers said, "I want that for my for my ringtone or my or whatever it was that it was going to be his answer thing on his phone." And it was one of the really ah, evil guys going, "I stab you, you're dead." And I just did that out of nowhere. And apparently, it's if your phone is phone, that's what you'll hear. I stab you, you're dead. It's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, what else we have now? Oh, this is interesting. We were talking a little bit about uh, a little bit about this before the yep. before the show. Will and uh, now I believe I said in the last episode Will and Dewitt, right? But in fact, it's Will and Do It. Now that this is, is a show yep. that I was talking about with Colin that mm-hmm. we didn't recognize because we weren't on it, so therefore it can't be done here. <laughs> That's oh. right. <laughs> and we said, well, it must be a Toronto show, and it is, and it is, and yeah. here it is, number three on your listing, Will mm-hmm. and Do It. So it is a Toronto show, and yet you're in it. Explain. Yes. Uh, I recorded Do It from Vancouver uh, on a patch, and, you know, we sort of did it that way. And they uh, they came out here, and they sort of they did uh, the small casting for Do It, and I was lucky enough to, to, to get it and do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was, you know, it's this little uh, frog that morphs into a whole bunch of different characters, which is so much fun for no me kidding. because it's – uh, it was I, th- I think it was a two by eleven, so it was two two episodes of eleven minutes long uh, uh, per thing. So we do a we did a bunch of scripts, and so for each eleven, it was like probably half uh, like a dozen voices. Wow! Yeah, and and they could all sort of stay within my range, so I wasn't stepping on my own toes because He's the it was same the same guy. guy, but he was morphing. <laughs> but I still could get into the general kind of you know. As low as I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's going to be the name of my next Limbo album. Oh, no. As low as I go. With Richard Cox. Um, well, that sounds like a total gift. Uh, it was so much acting. fun. It was so much fun, you know, and uh, there's also, you know, uh, singing in it, and which I oh, I wow. don't do super well. Uh, I Rex Harrison my way through everything. <laughs> so I sort of speak, sing. But the great thing is, is that uh, now my daughter's about a year and a half now. And we'll do it still on TV, and hopefully it does more. But you never know. <laughs> um, and uh, we watch. We'll do it in the middle of the day with uh, with my wee daughter, and she likes it. Well, it's fun. It's that's good. the litmus test. It keeps her attention for a minute, minute <laughs> and a half, and then she's off coloring a table. <laughs> she's good. She's got that Debbie Travis streak. <laughs> uh, the next one here is a show that you, I understand, just came from recording now. 
which would be mm. Care Bears. Yes. And you are Bedtime Bear, according to this. <laughs> uh, bedtime Bear, which is always hard to do first thing in the morning, because you see him running and everyone goes. <laughs> I made your entire uh, <laughs> listenership yawn just now. They all yawn. They all got tired and asked their mommy for Tang. That's because you're so talented. You have no. such an ability to play the character so well. Uh, it's, 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 it's very <laughs> difficult, but uh, I did the actor's studio. <laughs> not not in New York. I did the actor's studio in Boise, which is still really good. Nick Nolte went there uh, f- to use the bathroom. <laughs> He was great. <clears throat> so this, this sh- how long is, it seems to me that Care Bears is one mm. of these shows that's been going on forever, yeah. and it's also one of the shows that I can't seem to get on, but probably because of the voice, for some <laughs> reason, I don't know. I, I used to say- Beefy Bear. <laughs> Beefy Bear. I was saying, I was saying, it wasn't for Care Bears, it was for My Little Pony, and oh, I, yeah, I probably yeah, told yeah. this story a million times on the show already, but I, w- I, w- I would get so upset that sure. My Little Pony- was all these girls <clears throat> sure. and I kept saying you know what they need they need a character you know I got a character for you I gotta come in. I gotta play war horse and I'm gonna be war <laughs> Rawr! and he goes around and he stomps all the ponies but oh that'd be awesome somehow they didn't uh, see that go for it but Care Bears has been going on for a while mm-hmm. yes yeah it's been going yeah. on for a while yeah it's been going on for a bit you know um, I only sort of came into it the last sort of you know two seasons sort of thing you right. know um, and uh, you know but it's a lot of fun to do really talented people on it you know <laughs> it's Scott McNeil and like Ian Collette yeah. and you know it's Howard Sanchez and like, a bunch <laughs> of other people <laughs> oh! <laughs> I forgot the cardinal rule of being on a microphone. Be interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to do. It is a good show. Yeah, no, I like it very much. Uh, there are many, many, many entries here, and a lot mm. of them are live action stuff. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. you're doing a lot of live action. Uh, I have, yeah, yeah. Performing a lot of live action. <clears right>? Certainly, <throat> get on a set and get <clears throat> made up. I mean, I still insist on wearing makeup and wardrobe when I record shows on a microphone. <laughs> yes, well, that's what makes it such an enjo- uh, oh such a joy gosh. to record with. It you. is so much yeah. fun. You never know how it's gonna. Is he wearing <laughs> the pumps today? We're not sure. <laughs> uh, we've got a whole yeah. bunch here, and one that um, <clears throat> one that pops out is. Postal. Oh, good lord! <laughs> no, you know what? Yeah, Postal is. Uh, Was this a film based on the video game? It is of the yeah. same name. Yeah, directed could... by Uwe Boll, ah. who um, I, you know I got along fine with, but is sort of notorious in the online world and and uh, and even in the print media is sort of having a reputation as being one of the quote you know worst directors of all time. <laughs> Now I didn't say that. I think no. he's an interesting guy, uh, and and I and I had a fine time on the show. Uh, but uh, it he actually uh, had a lot of critics sort of you know panning him over the years, and he's apparently done you know invites saying come on to the set and see what it's like. Actually, he's German, so he went ah oh, yeah come on to the set and see what it's like. You know, um, he's Arnold's cousin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come and see the show. Yeah, I, they they think I'm worth the direct. I'll show them. I'll wow, show them. Wow, yeah, wow. come on, we'll have a beer. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it, what he did, he was a former boxer in his in his youth, in his youth, in his youth. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so he challenged all of these critics to fights, <laughs> <laughs> which actually took place. <laughs> I think four or five of them actually took place, and he, I mean, to, to borrow a line from A Mighty Wind, uh, they were pummeled. Uh, it was, they, they, he just tattooed them, and, and uh, yeah, I, I just hysterically funny to me that, you know, you want to do that, right? When someone badmouths you, you're like, come on, put them up. But this guy actually, actually did. did. Yeah, put them up. And uh, that's the result, was a pummeling in wow. many different cities. Yeah, so this it's a it's a it's a movie that um, I can't say I'm super proud of. Um, <laughs> for I, the, now, for those of you who don't know, Postal is oh, a video yeah. game, which I must say is one of my favorite video games. Is it of really? All time okay, well there you go. This is a game, and the premise is that you are a psychopathic postal worker right. who gets fired and goes on a murderous rampage through suburban America. Right. And my favorite part, and if that doesn't sound wacky <laughs> enough, my favorite part was that when you wanted to prematurely exit the game, right. like if you, you hadn't completed the level or whatever, <laughs> what would happen was you'd hit escape or whatever and he you're the guy you're playing would go i regret nothing and put the gun in his mouth and pull the trigger <laughs> yeah that pretty Gold! much that that summed up the making of the movie 
No, you know what? It was a it was a small part in it. It was a fun part. You know, Uve was great. The people were very nice. Uh, the plot for the for the show was a little. <laughs> Uh, interesting. <laughs> and it involved Al Qaeda and it involves, oh uh, you know, psychopathic weirdo people. So, you know, I've not seen it, probably never will. <laughs> the, the check didn't bounce. And, uh, you know, there we go. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was moving yeah. right along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one, um, that I'm particularly happy to see. And that is Being Ian. The yeah. lead on Being Ian. Mm-hmm. Great show. Great uh, joke, yeah. Uh, very funny. Uh, I've had the privilege to do just a few episodes, but how many seasons have you guys done now? Three or four? Three, or yeah. Three. three, and we've done a movie, which uh, our our good pal Martin um, <clears throat> from, from YTV can absolutely uh, um, give me the right answer on this one, but um, <clears throat> I know that... Uh, it's it's airing soon, sometime in October, middle to end of October, maybe even it airs in think September. That sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. We might even have a note about that later in the show in the middle. Yeah, and it's we'll it's to... a great it's a great uh, little TV movie special movie uh, with uh, David Suzuki in it. So we oh weird. he actually did it because I remember yeah. at the time they were talking about wanting to get him because a bunch of us read for this character which yeah. is supposed to be David Suzuki right and the right right yeah yeah yeah. Him. And they got them. That's uh, great. This is my understanding. Yeah, this that's is that's awesome. It's, uh, it's a great show to do. Yeah, yes. for sure. Lots of fun. Very happy to do. Uh, <laughs> and of course, that's Ian Corlett who yeah. uh, created the show Absolutely. and sort of based the show on his real life. Very much. Yeah. So in a way, you're kind of I like played Ian, Ian Corlett. <laughs> I've also, in my youth, played uh, Brad Pitt's younger brother. Wow. So that's the span. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> And there you go. <laughs> Funny because I thought I could. I thought I could see the resemblance. Basically the same yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, RV is yeah. a movie. Yes. Uh, that was in the theaters. I think for about ten minutes. But you <laughs> were you were in it, and this is with Robin Williams. Yes, it is with Robin Williams, Will Arnett. <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, a lot of great people. I want to talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Sure. And, uh, but for now, moving right along to Transformers Cybertron, mm-hmm. and you are Scattershot. I'm Scattershot. A uh, nice southern guy. Southern guy. Southern yeah, guy. yeah. Trying to do the best he can. Just let him turn the sky and the earth, you know? <laughs> awesome. That's so awesome. Sending fan mail to Sarah Palin. <laughs> I'm cleaning my guns. I'm getting ready to field dress a moose. What the hell does that mean, field dress a moose? Put him in a nice floral frock? What the hell? This is a nice garland. This is sort of a... <laughs> An aubergine sort of reduction that we drizzle over the moose. <laughs> I'm just ready to go. I put a little garland around the edges of the plate, and it's ready. To, voila! It's an Alaskan Thanksgiving. Yeah, it feeds a family of seventy. <laughs> Turn up in your suburban extendo cab. <laughs> That's fun. Um, Woo! What else here? Of course, here it is—the big one. I'm surprised it took so long for this to pop. It's 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 long-haired head. Sure. But, uh, Inuyasha. Inuyasha. Yeah. Now this is a huge show, and this is it a is. show that when you go to conventions, you see people dressed up like Inuyasha. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like in a way, like you. Very much. Uh, Very much so. All the time, you see people dressed yeah. up as Inuyasha, and characters from Inuyasha, and the Absol- whole bit. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think is the real draw about that particular show? Why do you think it's done so well? In the anime world, um, you know, I, I, I can't give you a, an absolutely definitive answer. I mean, obviously, my opinion, and clearly that's what you're asking for. So I'm drawing this out way too long. <laughs> um, ooh, a twelve string guitar. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, it's just, it's obviously, it's clearly someone that's uh, hit a chord that's resonated with the fan base uh, and and with viewers. I think that you know he's. He's an ass kicker. If you know, you can bleep that if you like. Uh, by which I mean, he kicks donkeys a lot. Uh, but he's an he's an ass kicker, and, and he's um, you know you can't argue you can't argue with immortality. You can't argue with swords. You can't order uh, argue with feudal Japan. You can't order uh, argue with sort of every component uh, of the show that really sort of brings it together and, and makes it what it is. And I, and I just think. For me, it was a huge honor to play the guy. It was a big honor to come from doing a character like Ranma, who is so sort of loved as well. But then going, hey, getting you know, getting to do a guy who's just as full of attitude, but a can back it up, and b you know, gets a chance to be on TV, and it's not just box sets that people have to buy or any of these things. So you know, I, I think that. Um, I mean, lots of these shows are very popular these days, but uh, I think that that one, you know, like you said, clearly. It, it hit a chord, and I think that, you know, maybe those are a few of the reasons as to why. 
Cool. Well, um, <clears throat> I don't actually watch a lot of anime. Right. Uh, but I have watched a couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. And not just the ones that were at the end, like other ones. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of cool. Like, I yeah. think it's kind of it's kind of neat. <clears throat> I liked it. And I like the I like the love story. And I think that, you know, like, and, and to be honest, like, my wife is, is sort of the same thing. You know, like, when, uh, you know, she's not an actor. She doesn't <laughs> live in our crazy mixed up world. Uh, she's a normal person. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, she, you know, she hadn't seen a lot of anime, and so she saw some of the stuff that I'd done, and sort of thought, "Well, that's cool," but it's, you know, it's I, I, I don't really, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you know, grab me. But she, when she saw Inuyasha, was there was a few uh, elements to it that that she really quite liked, and you know, and then sort of wanted to know what's well, what's going on, what's going on with Kiki, what's going on with Kagome, <laughs> you know. So I, I, you know, so it transcends the it boundaries does between transcend. normal and anime. Fans. Absolutely. Uh, you were on Stargate Atlantis as mm -hmm. Dr. Brendan Gall, apparently. Yep. Shot myself in the head. Oh, really? Yep. I regret nothing. <laughs> 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 I aged many years. A wraith sucked my life force out of me. <clears throat> Much like John McCain does to anyone watching a debate. <laughs> uh -oh! Hello! <laughs> He looks like he needs a nap. The poor guy, <laughs> the poor guy just needs to lie down. So, and you know, and on that note, before yeah, uh, before yeah. I run the risk of alienating my Republican listeners out there. Oh, uh, hey, I got lots of Republican <laughs> friends. Funny, I don't. Um, so, uh, <laughs> well, the, I do. The next one here is uh, X Men Evolution. Yeah. Uh, and there's a whole bunch, but I'm just sort of skipping down to ones that kind sure. of uh, sure. jump out at me, and not just again because I was in the show, <laughs> 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 but because that was a fun show to work on, and you were Quicksilver. I was. I spoke very quickly. <laughs> I spoke extremely quickly. <clears throat> and you were Pietro Maximoff. Was he Russian too? Yes, he was the son of Mr. Bad Guy Magneto. Oh, yes. I see. So I don't know anything about yeah. the um, about the whole comic book right. thing. Because not only do I not watch cartoons, really, right, right. but also don't like comics. Right. Um, never seen a movie. Right. And um, no movies at no, all. No, never seen one. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely certain how this is being recorded because right. there isn't people right. banging out our words into stone right. tablets. So I don't know. I'm fairly certain that if you yell really loud at a tape, it <laughs> it catches it, and then you can play it later. <laughs> okay. Good okay. Lord. Uh, Silverwing. Yeah. This is a show called mm -hmm. Silver, which I assume is another. See, I don't even know. Is it's another comic book? It it's is another comic book <laughs> thing, there, Mister Cox. It is not. Is it is a series of novels uh, about a bat <laughs> and a bat colony that was written by a Canadian. Uh, Are you and it was, yeah, absolutely, and it was really popular, <laughs> and um, so we recorded, you know, one season. I uh, thought it would go for a second. It did not, in fact, um, <laughs> but it should have. But it was and, really good. And you played Orestes. I did. I played Orestes, who was an owl who was conflicted. Well, really, the owls Character were the bad guys. Uh, yeah, That's weird cool. that, huh? Who, who, would know? Hmm. who would guess? The owls were the bad guys, and uh, I was an owl, but I was conflicted. I, I didn't want to go against the bad. I, you know, I was, I was pretty much a good guy. <laughs> Never get in a van with a guy that sounds like this. <laughs> I, have, I have a puppy in my van. <laughs> I, I I have candy in my van. I have, I have a puppy made out of candy in my van. Do I, I have a van made out of candy in my van with a puppy made out of candy in that van. Do you want to get in my van? Okay. All right. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Uh, we have Gundam Seed here. Yes, sir. Or Kido Senshi Gundam Seed. Gundam Seed. Oh. Read the, the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Gundam Seed. And you were uh, Shani. Oh, he was Shani? one of the yeah. young... Was he crazy or was the young pilot dude? Was Shani he... was... Uh, or one of the... Shani was uh, a crazy guy who died. Ooh. And then there was another guy, though. Oh, crap. Now I'm looking like an idiot. <laughs> I look like an idiot. If this was the Conan O'Brien show, I'd have a big sign that says "ass" <laughs> stamped on my face. Oh, somebody will will email you and let you know. Huh? Okay, yeah, somebody will. Will yell um, at me and chuck I thought, eggs at me. I thought that you were somebody. I uh, was two uh, people. I was one of the flyers. Yeah, you're right. Who was? A I'm good talking dude. about one of the guys that were, they were the good guys. Yeah, they were the young kids. Yes, and that's they right. Were, they were sort of like caught in the middle of this war. That's absolutely right. Okay, so yeah, okay, so I right. was one of those guys. Can't remember his name. All right, and then Shawnee. We call him Buddy. We, yeah, was yeah, Buddy. <laughs> buddy, what's buddy, his name? Buddy, how you doing? <laughs> hey, this is Buddy. <laughs> That would be. I'd love to see New York, like Brooklyn anime. Hey, this is Buddy. How you doing? What are you? What are you like a cat or a dog or something? What is that? A sword? Hey, Buddy. Hey, what are you doing? 
You don't look so big. Hey, yeah, get out of here. That Forget would be about awesome. About I would about love it. that. It'd be the best show ever. Bitch, you, if you. Hamtaro. Hamtaro. Ham, yes. ham, hamtaro. Ham. I was one of uh, six million characters. Oh, yes. That was on that show. Sabu. 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 My girlfriend was um, a pigeon. Who? Yeah, and I was a hamster. Biracial. Oh, wow. That was exciting. <laughs> Woo! Croc, Once you go pigeon, mixed, you don't go soul, I don't know. <laughs> anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Pigeons are great. A friend of mine used to try and confuse me with little logic queries. That, right, yeah. That when you listen to them, at first they sound, oh, yeah, but then you sure, think sure, about sure, it, sure. you go, no, no, that doesn't make any sense. And right. one of the ones he used to do was, hey, you ever see a baby pigeon? Mm. And you go, no. Where do they come from? What do they just spontaneously generate? Oh sure. no, they're on rooftops, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's where they are. Yeah. Nests and stuff. They come out of <laughs> eggs, is, is my understanding. Yeah. But it sounds but like that is good. Yeah. another one he would do all the time was and I know he's listening to this episode right now, but right. another one he would do is if nothing sticks to Teflon. Yeah. How do they make Teflon stick to the pan? Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, the thing is the back of Teflon is really sticky. <laughs> You just got to spray it on the right way. <laughs> if you spray it on the other way, it just comes right <laughs> off, and just, then it will stick to your shoe. Yeah, that's right. It bounces back yeah, like that. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really like rubber and glue. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's one. If you had a really, really, really big telescope, this is actually co- kind of true. So I don't know why I'm doing it with this voice. <laughs> if you pointed it at the right place in the universe, you should be able to see the beginning of the universe via the Big Bang. Yeah, that's right. It is. Because, you know, the light is so old, right? You know, like, you know, so, you know, like... (laughs) Or if you pointed the telescope at exactly the right place, you could see the spontaneous, you know, birth of everything. Yeah. Right there in that that place. You see me being born. (laughs) 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 It's perfect. You're listening to Vice Birth with Trevor and (laughs) That is fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> well, that's a bit weird. Um, Mega Man. Mega yes, Man. I was Burner Man. Burner Man. Yeah. And what I did... looked like an oven. <laughs> I did. <laughs> my chest was an oven. There was a big <laughs> dial on my head. I love that show. Yeah, it was awesome. I love the characters in yeah. that show. Captain <laughs> Obvious. Should have been one of the... <laughs> love it. It's fantastic. See, now here's the thing about me on a microphone in any way, shape, or form. I get stupid and I say stupid things. So I almost don't want to see a transcript of this because I am famous for saying ridiculously offensive things. Well, that's okay. I mean, you offended me the minute you walked in. No, no, that's fine. I believe one of my best answers ever in an interview that was recorded and then transcribed was what was some of the movies that you don't like? And I, I believe, now I'm going to do it again right here. Uh, I said Titanic. I hated Titanic. That Titanic was one of the worst movies ever made. And then I progressed to, and you could see, the, you could see, see that to Mr. James Cameron too. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Why would I do that? Just on the off chance that this guy ever wants to hire me, and he's like, I'm gonna Google him because everyone Google's everyone now. <laughs> hey, what? He wanted to see, see what? <laughs> I'll show him. I will not cast him in my filming of the movie Lusitania. As Brad Pitt's younger brother. <laughs> Brad's Pitt, y- Brad Pitt's younger, dumber brother. Hey, how you going, guys? I found a baby. Is this one one of yours? Uh, an old one here, Monster yeah. Rancher. Yes. A monster Rancher. Were you one of the regular dudes on that? I would love to tell you an answer, but I don't have one. <laughs> okay. I don't remember. I wasn't regular, That's no. <laughs> Well, I was regular, but... <laughs> Ooh, well, this hey. portion brought to you by Venom that... Uso. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, H-E Double Hockey Sticks. Was yeah. that a movie? Classic. It was a classic movie. Because I've heard... Uh, I think a lot of people here in Vancouver worked on that in some Sure. In yeah, some it was a form. hockey movie for Disney. <clears throat> uh, and, you know, they're the go-to people for hockey movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they are. And I question. played a... Uh, it was ridiculous. Like, you couldn't... You couldn't see my face, and I was very happy that you couldn't. Because I, I played a... Excuse me, I played a Mater D at a hockey themed restaurant, and so uh, the gag was that I was dressed up in a goalie outfit uh-huh. with the pads and the mask. Ah. And all you saw was my giant <clears throat> eyes, and that's what I was cast on, was my giant, giant eyes. Giant eyes. Yeah. Right. Which is ridiculous. Um, Infinite Revise is another one here. What's Monkey Magic? Do you recall Monkey yes, Magic? Yes, I do recall Monkey Magic. I don't, record, I don't recall recording any of the episodes. No. Uh, I think I played. <laughs> Green monkey or something like that? Um, what did I play? Red chip slash red chip. There San, you go. Sanso? I don't know. Sure. Yeah, okay, let's That okay. sounds Because we're going back now, because this is like uh, 1998. We're back in 1998. 74. 
Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. This um, one I love, Breaker High. Breaker High, Breaker yeah. Breaker High, the locally shot TV the series. The locally shot show that traveled the four corners of the globe and met new and interesting people and insulted every one of them. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We went to some of the most amazing places on Earth on a cruise ship. We went to Paris. Now, I want you to think about that. We yeah. went to Paris on a cruise ship. <laughs> It's landlocked, people. It's like, what? Yeah, it was awesome. We're we cruising went... to Saskatchewan. We're doing <laughs> right to Regina. It was awesome. We're doing four knots right through the middle of the... Oh, we hit a guy. We hit a guy. We got to pull over. We got to... Sorry. Um, we hit just the one guy standing in the middle of Saskatchewan. Um, yeah, no, and my favorite, my honestly, my absolute favorite, and you as a globe trotter will, will enjoy this, is that we went to... Uh, um, we went to I believe it was Kenya or we went somewhere in Africa we, we met Maasai warriors <laughs> and they were really great and the people that they cast were really really nice guys and they were really like buff and you know muscly and, but I, if you've ever seen Maasai warriors they're known for being actually very slender and quite tall and you know and uh, if you've seen it on National <coughs> Geographic or anywhere like where there's the sort of a circle of people together and there's yeah. the jumping and the, and with all the the great accoutrements and everything else. It's fantastic to watch. And and our guys were about my height, which is about 5'7", brawny, <laughs> super muscular, really, really sweet guys. But they didn't quite look like the folks I had seen uh, in my my in research. Boston. Yeah, in my research of uh, the Maasai Warriors, who are an interesting <clears throat> gr- group of folks. Yes, well, I'm yeah. going to have some on the next show, maybe. Excellent! <laughs> um... Action Man. Yes. You uh, did a little Action Man. I did. Uh, the Black Stallion mm-hmm. here. Was, is that a live show? Was that yes, a live that was series? a live show. And you, 78 uh, episodes. 78 episodes. That's correct. We shot for three years here, New Zealand, and in France. And who were you in that? I was Alec. I and was the boy. You were the lead in that. I was the only so boy say... who could ride the Black Stallion. Really? Yes, absolutely right. And I did not uh, parlay <clears throat> that into a career in porn, as some people might think. I was about think, to say. That's just the on that natural... name alone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where you'd go. You'd go with that one, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Ranma one half. That's correct. And you were Ranma. On I certainly was. So you've had a number of big, leading, very influential roles <laughs> in the animation. Extremely influential. Well, you know, with, with the These fun. are with as the influential <laughs> as Kissinger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are really Surprise, important people. Surprise, last night on the debate, it, it, it was Obama and McCain, but there was no Richard Cox. It was I'm odd. I'm not sure. It was weird. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> like, it feels like we're missing some. I was there. I was just very short, and uh, I couldn't see over my podium. You and the rest of the Maasai. That's <laughs> Maasai well, and I in the back row. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk more about your, um, your wonderful leading roles and your experiences in the booth when we come back. Certainly. With Mr. Richard Cox. We interrupt this eargasmic gornocopia of pure audio win to shamelessly promote another podcast. No! No! The Big Bald Broadcast. But what makes it big and bald? The Big Bald Broadcast brings you news on all things geeky, movies, gadgets, games, cartoons and anime, and other random fandom. You're fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. But what makes it big and bald? It's hosted by big, bald anime and video game voice actor Kyle Bear and his co-host, musician and upcoming author, Otherworld Steve. Oh, you must smell like feet wrapped in leathery burnt bacon. Subscribe via iTunes or visit thebigballbroadcast.blogspot.com. That was totally wicked! Hello friends, do you love you some Leonardo? Go mad for my heart, or dare to totally dig the adventure? Then this, my friends, is for you. Hero and a Half Shell is a Facebook fan group dedicated to the voice talent that is Michael St. Nicholas. Here, you can talk about the man himself, your encounters with him at conventions, the shows he's worked on or is working on, anything at all. So come on by and check us out today. Just search Hero in a Half Shell, the Michael St. Nicholas fan group, or alternatively, check out the Michael St. Nicholas fan page. Hero in a Half Shell, coming to a computer screen near you soon. 
Francis Ford Coppola's visually beautiful, groundbreaking masterpiece, Apocalypse Now, returns yet again with its surrealistic and symbolic sequences detailing the confusion, violence, fear, and nightmarish madness that was the Vietnam War. Now, re-see the brilliant vision in a way never before uh, seen. Francis Ford Coppola and Jim Henson's Creature Workshop come together to bring you the Muppet Apocalypse Now. The lily pad. Shit, I'm still only in the lily pad. Every time I think I'm gonna wake up back in the jungle. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? What's on the other side? Relive the majesty of the greatest film of all time in a cuter, cuddlier way. Classic scenes remastered in Muppet Vision. Me love the smell of cookies in the morning. What about Ernie? Ernie don't surf. Take a ride up the river into the darkness at the heart of man. Experience the climactic final scene when Captain Kermit D. Frog confronts the madness that is Colonel Burtz. I watched a fraggle crawl along the edge of a straight razor. That's my dream. It's my nightmare. And Ernie was eating crackers in bed again. The horror. The horror. Order now and receive the companion documentary on the making of the Muppet Apocalypse Now, Hearts of Foam. The Muppet Apocalypse Now, coming soon. Well, not really. You're listening to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And we're back with the illustrious Richard Cox. I wonder if that guy from uh, the uh, radio station is going to use the illustrious now. <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. <laughs> that would be wonderful. So you've been in this business a long time. Yeah. And, 40 years. Uh, 40, it's been 40 years now. Since I was yeah. negative five. <laughs> um, if you had to pick some of your favorite moments, what would they be? <clears throat> I, uh, I don't know if I could say half of them. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite moments are stories I love to tell. Uh you know, one on one or one on two, sort of, you know, quiet, sort of <laughs> silly things that have happened over the years. Um, some of my favorite moments, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think that, um, I think that, you know, well, booking Black Stallion, I think, would be a big one that sticks in my head, you know, when I was a kid and, and I had to go to school that day mm. uh, and, you know, grade 11 and I get the call from the agent at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning that, <laughs> uh, hey, you booked this show and you're going to go and shoot 26 episodes here and in France and you're going to ride wow. a horse and it's going to be great and you're going to have fun and to go to school the next day and sort of, you know, tell my friend, I mean, after six auditions, you know, for yeah. this whole thing and tell my friend quietly I, I I booked this show and I, you know I'm gonna go do this thing and, and it, that was that's huge um, and having those experiences I think a lot of you know every day I woke up and was able to go to set or go to a studio and go and work I think you know is a good day for me and how old um, were you at the time of the Black Stallion? 16 I was 16 to 19 by the time we finished that I was 19 years old uh, and you know I'd started in the business professionally at 14 uh, that was you know the show with Brad Pitt <clears throat> years ago <laughs> well before he was you know anything uh, obviously on the big road that he's on now um, and then you know I think other great moments are you know we were talking uh, during our little break that it was, it's about talking with fans and interacting with fans and, and talking with them and I, I think that uh those are definitely some of my favorite moments in the business. So, or, you know, talking to what those about folks. Uh, what about in terms of the conventions? What are what are the some of your favorite cities to go to for conventions? Favorite cities to go to conventions are uh, Washington D.C. being you know a politico, yes. uh, Toronto. I love uh, I love the big smoke. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> the big city with the big tower. I like to go there. There's a number of cities that they call the big smoke. Yeah, I don't know exactly. what that is. I don't understand it. <laughs> I think it's all about. I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, Toronto, uh, DC, San Diego. I love San, San Diego. Great town. Big shout out to everyone in San Diego. Love it. I, we're actually, uh, I, I, you know, I've devised a show that will need to be shot in San Diego just to live <laughs> in San Diego for a good period of time. 
Um, Chicago is a great town. Uh, Haven't been Baltimore. there Baltimore, Bal- Baltimore, Maryland is a great town to yeah, go. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about Baltimore. Yeah, uh, great city, and it's close to DC, so it's uh, it's in. Uh, you know, lots of the, pretty much any city that I've been for a con, I've had a good time with. I, I've never sort of come away going, man, that was that was awful. I've never <laughs> I've never had that experience. Uh, but I'd love to go to let's say I don't know Honolulu. That'd be great. Yes. You guys want to fly me out to Honolulu? Yes. I will be. Happy to come. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, and, you know, back to the UK. I know a few people. I was born in the UK, so I'd love to go back and oh, see really? my family. And so anyone in, you know, in the UK that's got a con going on, uh, I'd be more than happy to come. Where were um, you uh, Where were you born? I was born in St. Asaph, North Wales. Slanelwi, as it's also known. Ah. Um, North Wales. Yeah, and all oh, my family's still back in the UK. So. Wow! Hello, hello everyone, <laughs> hello everyone back home. When um, did you uh, When did you move over? I was tiny. I was uh, 1973. I was like two months, two, well, this, two and a half. But this, we used to um, go back every like every couple of years, every three years, and and so we get care packages all the time from mm. family. And and I always joke that uh, that uh, my well, my parents were you know a little bit sort of conservative and ang- anglophiles, obviously being mm-hmm. uh, Brits. And so I always joke I was I was raised in in Britain of the 1970s <laughs> in Canada until about 1992. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, and, and I always joke that, uh, but it's true I, that I didn't realize that Smarties didn't come in tubes over here until I was about 12 because all the Smarties that came to me were, you know, in these care packages. So, uh, but I grew up reading all the all the, the comics of Buster, the Beano, Dandy, you know. Right. Good times, you know. Um, so that sort of leads into my next question, which is how you right. got on the business. Now, you were born in the UK, you yes. moved to Canada, and yes. you said at the break that you uh, had moved around a lot as a kid yeah. every couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, if you could paint the picture for me now about right. young Richard Cox right. and how this young boy right. got to become the powerhouse of anime <laughs> that he is today. Okay, that sounds no problem, eh? <laughs> uh, I was, uh, as I said, born in the UK. We emigrated uh, to Canada. We settled in Ontario. Uh, we lived there for four years. Uh, and my dad is uh, my dad's an engineer, a uh, ah. professional engineer. So uh, we move as the economy changes and morphs and changes and morphs. So you'll be going again somewhere yeah, else, well, perhaps. Yeah, dad, dad'll be packing us all up and going. I'm like, Dad, I'm 35. I have a family of my own. I don't care. You're coming with me. <laughs> We're going to Kenya. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you know, that was it. And we moved from Ontario. We moved to Alberta and I lived in Calgary. I lived in Edmonton. I lived in Fort McMurray. Edmonton. Woo, woo. Edmonton. I lived in St. Albert, man. Woo. Shout out to St. Albert. <laughs> S-T to the Albert. Uh, um, and, uh, and the letter coded areas of St. Albert, which was always awesome. <laughs> Where do you live? Um, it starts with an L. Okay. I'll find you. Just drive around all the L streets. We're gonna be good. Uh, and then to Vancouver and, and, you know, I started in theater in St. Albert. You know, Edmonton's a great theater city, the Citadel and all that anyway. stuff. It was, yeah. yes, back in the day. And uh, there was a children's theater there in St. Albert. And I, I understand it's still there. It's still running. It's still going strong. And that's where I got my start was the St. Albert Children's Theater. And how um, old were you at the time? I think I was nine, eight or nine. Um, and, uh, you know, did a did great show. I did, uh, what did we do? We did Huckleberry Finn and we did um, Emperor's New Clothes. And we did, so we, you know, some old productions here. And... Uh, and then Fort McMurray did uh, a little um, a little theater up there with a chap I believe whose name was uh, Keith Martin, uh, and they had a small um, you know young persons theater there. Um, and then to uh, Vancouver, in the Lower Mainland. When I was uh, I think we moved here when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. Um, <clears throat> So you are largely a Vancouverite by this point. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've been living here for, you know, 20, 21 years, something like that. Um, if that math works, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's it. I was scouted by an agent at a at a, at a, a festival, and um, I stayed with her until she sold the agency and then stayed with the agency as it's, you know, continued on today. Um, and you're still with that agency? Same, still with the same agency. Wow. 20 years with the same agency. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, they they do write by me, Trevor. Um, they're good. They're good people. They're menches. They're good people. Uh, you know, and that's really and so in terms of the business, that's how I started. And um, you know, as you said, I, I I did mostly live action. You know, in my early career, and and lucky enough to do things like Black Stallion and all that kind of jazz. And 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 you know, did a couple of cartoon things here and there. Uh, ZZ Bots, which was then changed to Bots Master, was my first you know prelay show, and then. Um, uh, did a couple little small bits in anime, but then 
um, <clears throat> the first you know sort of big gig while we well, actually while we were shooting Breaker High was uh, Ranma. Ah, and then from there it just sort of spiraled and spiraled upward. So how was it then that you? Uh, got the audition for Ranma because this is this is a, a curious thing to me when I hear people's stories about how they actually made the break into anime especially coming from uh, from live action sure. stuff because sure. a lot of the time agents who are representing actors you know a lot of actors say oh, I'd really like to get into animation I think I've got mm-hmm. a pretty expressive voice and uh, <laughs> you know well you're doing very well Mr. Duchovny <laughs> but you obviously do and sure. obviously did so how how did that happen uh, you know, to be totally honest, uh, it was a question of, you know, hey, this is another audition like the others. Mm. Uh, you'd, I'd been out for a few voice at that point. I'd had the notes coming back saying, hey, you're just, you know, you need to be a little more expressive. You need to be a little more sort of round. And so I ate a lot of food and they said, not that kind of round. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so uh, I think doing Botsmaster really helped me work with the with my own voice because I was doing two separate characters, which you know, uh, which helped and, and worked into that. And then and literally, you know, Ranma was another one of those auditions. It was like you know, go out and try to book it, and you know, do what you're doing. And and I was lucky enough to sort of get it. But I think that the 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 thing that clicked for me with the anime stuff is that you know, um, anime has lots of cartoony elements to it. But shows like Ranma, shows like, you know, Ranma was reasonably, you know, cartoony. But you know, the straight guy, right? You know, Ranma or Inuyasha, the same thing. Mm. You know, they're they're guys who are serious about what they're doing. So it was really, you know, it. Uh, I, I really think my cartoony stuff came later. You know, right. like working on other shows, and it's something that evolved and morphed. And like anything else, you know, it's something that. Obviously, people have to work at it. It's not going to happen overnight. And even as a as a guy or a gal sitting around the basement and, you know, you know, joshing with your friends. How's that for a word? Joshing <laughs> with your friends. Uh, you know, those voices are cool. They're cool in that moment. But are they, as we said, are they as round as they can be? Or are they, you know, and, and that takes time. You know, even if you're great at doing those, it will still take time for people to be able to see you as somebody who has a range within those cartoony voices. Because there are so many people, by the time you get into this industry, with great voices, great mm. cartoony sort of things, great <coughs> silliness, great sort of, you know, I mean, something that needs to sort of grow. And it definitely had to grow for me. It certainly wasn't something that was overnight, you know. I think that's probably the same with uh, all of us, you know. Sure. Because you know, <clears throat> the people that tend to work in our business are, are you know, sort of natural crazy ham type. Yeah, absolutely. But even, even you know, the, the hammiest of the hams still were a bit awkward the first couple times they oh, were yeah. in the booth going, oh, is sure. this really, oh, is this how we do it? Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool, man. Oh, I totally agree. And it sort of uh, ties into the, the next segment, which is advice. I mean, yeah. advice for people trying to get in the business. Um, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> always blackmail is good. <laughs> if you have photos about it, uh, you know, and people in, with compromising positions involving uh, livestock or uh, bags of marshmallows, uh, that'll go a long way to getting you out there. Um, That's how Richard got on this show, actually. It is actually right. <laughs> it was involving livestock and marshmallows. I don't, I don't think a pig can eat that many marshmallows, Trevor. I better videotape this. Um Advice, I, you know, I think that uh, I've heard others give this advice, and, I, and in fact, I think I will credit it to uh, Scott McNeil, and, and I, you know, I've heard him say it. I don't know if he uh, has to credit from somebody else, but uh, and it's, it's a good point. It's a very good point. Focus on the acting in the voice acting part of things. You know, I think that, again, you know, doing great zany voices is awesome, but it still has to be real. It still has to come from a good, even if it's silly, it still has to make sense, you know, in the head. Uh, But the big thing I think is, you know, go somewhere where they do voice stuff. It might be hard to, you know, to get a gig in, uh, you know, Falstaff. Uh, It's, (laughs) you know, Flagstaff or, you know, Falstaff. Falstaff is, that's a very Shakespeare in town. Um, In Flagstaff, (laughs) it might be difficult to maybe get the voice gig. I don't know. I mean, maybe they've got stuff going on there. But, you know, you'll want to go to a center. And, you know, and if that's uh, L.A. or Vancouver, New York or, 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 uh, you know, Houston or anything else, you know, uh, then maybe that's where you need to get to go. Um, And, and, you know, have fun with it. Just have fun with it. I mean, it's going to be a business. Yes, there's going to be that element to it. 
But it's got to be something that you you love to do. You get up in the morning and you want to be silly. You know? Amen. Amen, Amen man. man. Did you actually take any training or did you just launch right in? No, I pretty much launched right in. I want to be an actor. I want to be silly. Uh, well, you know, I started out, like I said, with the children's theater. Uh, and that, you know, I, I think on the job kind of training is great. And that, that kind of a thing is, uh, you know, it was a community-based thing. So, you know, audition, get in there, learn some stuff. I mean, I did, you know, a lot of learning uh, with great directors uh, with St. Albert and, and here in Vancouver with uh, VYT at the time, uh, Carol Tarlington, who was running right. that. Uh, you know, some, and, and that's really my, my uppance did come through that. Right. But I, I, I didn't uh, go no, to school specifically uh, to, to do this. On the job training. It's pretty much the only real place you can learn uh, how yeah. to do, especially the prelay stuff sure. we do here. Because... Uh, it's uh, I, I do a lot of teaching. I try to teach these people so yes. many things, but it's very hard to to uh, you properly demonstrate the madness that is the Prilla Studio. Yes, it, it often helps to have a bunch of people in the room with you that you can yes. feed off of. Yes. I always think that uh, a Prilla show at about nine in the morning uh, <laughs> is kind of like a morning zoo on a radio show. Oh, God, yeah. It's just a bunch of people getting on the microphone and making themselves sound crazy. <laughs> Was it wet out there today on the way in? What do you think, Trevor? Well, I believe well, it is. pretty crazy. It's raining cats and dogs and elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Fifi for the weather. I think that it's going to stay cloudy. <laughs> it's, I, I think that it's, it's a bunch of people getting on a microphone and trying to sound, you know, big and silly and whatever it is. Yeah. And, and it's a good thing to get into, though. Like, I think that, you know, that one-upmanship, even if it's in your own head, actually, <laughs> you know, helps bring you along to a place. And that's the big thing. Like, when I, you know... When I'm lucky enough to get to do silly characters, yes. uh, I try to just sort of make people laugh. And if I can make the folks in the room laugh, well, then you're in a good place because yeah. we're, we're pretty jaded, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I've noticed over the years that I don't always laugh anymore. I just will look at people when they say, and it can be very funny, and I'll think it's very funny on the inside, but I'll look at them and sort of just go, I was hysterical. <laughs> and I'll actually speak <laughs> what my emotions should be dictating. But, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm now at that point where, you know, that and just pure jealousy that I didn't think of it first. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us see what is in the mailbag. Okay. Martin's Mailbag. And we have a few things from Martin to tell us here. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, who yes. is the goat at the end of that? <laughs> Well, you did mention something about compromising photos ah, of livestock. Ah, so. you are correct, sir. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> what the hell? Is that supposed to be in here? <laughs> oh, I pooped in my coffee. <laughs> That's your protein. No, I will not milk you. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to put that at the end of the bumper now, that whole... <laughs> <laughs> So Martin tells us that on YTV, yes, you can see Mr. Richard Cox on Being Ian Mondays through Sundays at six a.m. Six a.m. My God, there's a six a.m. I didn't know. No one told me. <laughs> there's a six a.m. now. <laughs> and uh, Monday to Friday at three p.m. and five a.m. Good lord! Really? Well, you're uh, all over the dial there. I am everywhere. Will and do it. Mm -hmm. Not do it. But no. do it. Will and do, do it. it. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. and Sundays at 6.30 a.m. Everyone check those out. Ah, here we go. The Being Ian, Being Green special there with we go. David Suzuki there we go. is coming to YTV on Wednesday, October the 15th, which would which be yesterday. yesterday. Yay! Hey, it was at, awesome. Uh, at 4.30 p.m. <laughs> and, and again at Sunday, October the 19th at 8 a.m. So if I get this podcast out in time, you might be able to catch it there then. There you go. Uh, Inuyasha is currently on the Bionics On Demand service. Check your cable subscribers if they carry it. And in a few months' time, the Transformers Energon DVD set will be released. Uh, in other news, for anime fans in Toronto, Brad Swale has been announced as the guest for the December Toronto Anime Convention on December the 14th. Also, on Saturday, October the 25th, and this I'm very excited about, there's a sneak peek of Kid vs. Cat on YTV, which Ooh. is a show that I worked on all at the beginning of this year. Very funny stuff. Saturday, October the 25th at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Uh, also on that same day, YTV will be airing Scary Godmother 1 and 2, at 2 and 3 p.m., and that is a show done here featuring Tabitha St. Germain, Scotty McNeil, and Gary Chalk. On to the letters and questions from our fans. First of all, 
This one is from Caitlin. Hello, with a D. Caitlin. Hello. She says. Sorry, with a D? With a D. Caitlin. Hello, Caitlin. Hello, Caitlin. Hello, Caitlin. She says, Hi, Trevor. I'm so excited that you're back and hope my question gets asked. Well, I'm not going to do it now. Now. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, I would like to know, and it can be to the both of you, if you had to. Oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Especially in your case. Okay. If you had to name your child after one of your characters, oh, if you had to, mind you. Right. Which one would it be? Now, you already have a little girl. I do, yes. And you have another little creature I have another creature on, coming the, way, on yeah. the way. Do, what did you say next week? Uh, it... Yeah, anytime now. Anytime. Yeah. Oh, so the phone could Two ring. Weeks could, yeah, it could, it could go and I've got to go. So the question is, let's get these questions done sure. before the birth then, <laughs> uh, is if you had to oh. name your child who is imminently coming wow. after one of your characters. Wow. <laughs> I'd have to go with uh, my character from Galaxy Angels, uh, Normad. Uh, just because he was a funny, he was a fuzzy little toaster <laughs> <laughs> with no mouth flaps. So it was great. It was so, eight, so um, now, now just, just uh, who is actually a bomb. A, oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that's very cool. Actually. Yeah. But now I was just thinking Nomad. fast forward. Uh, Nomad Cox is 44 years old. Right. Uh, he hasn't had a date in uh, 44 years. Perfect. Uh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's feeling, he's feeling fuzzy and right. explosive. Sure. And he's. <laughs> He's Absolutely. Cursing your name. Sure. <laughs> Do you remember that song, A Boy Named Sue? There you go. And I uh, abhor the notion of children, so I have no answer, Caitlin. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Trevor and Richard. Uh, um,. I would first like to ask Trevor if he will ever end up doing any East Coast conventions like Anime Next, which I know a few of your co-workers have been to in the past. I've done it. Uh, well, there you go. There you go. I'd like to meet you in person, but sadly live on the other side of the continent. Well, I'll tell you what. This is from Eddie from New Jersey, buddy. Hey, Eddie. Eddie from New Jersey. Hey, he'd like a New Brooklyn Bronx sort of based <laughs> anime. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Forget about what's it. What's your deal? What's the matter with you? Huh? What's Five your deal? Hours. You don't what like you comedy? What's the matter? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Eddie, I would, that. I would love to go to Anime Next, but I need you to petition them to get me there. And as, as a bit of a side note, I wanted to mention this. Uh, the show I did with Vic uh, back in Edmonton, and I think it was episode four, was tremendously well-received, and it was a live version of voice right. print done right. as part of a oh, panel it was cool. in fact its own panel at a convention wow. where the audience had a microphone and at the end of the show they could come up and directly ask questions that's we awesome feel them right there so i want to do that again let's do it people like you know greg Ayers or monica real eddie or, or hey eddie, eddie, how eddie you doing? what i'm saying is buddy you want me to go to anime next all you got to do <laughs> is write a letter write an email to these guys and say what's the matter with you how come there's no trevor to val eh? <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like comedy? And while you're at it, get them to bring me back. That's right. I like that part of the country. That's for Trevor and the Cox. You're going to come down here, and I'm going to sort you guys out. Understand me? <laughs> Bugats. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will be wonderful. <laughs> anyway, Eddie has a question just for you. Yeah. It starts off very encouragingly. Although I'm not very familiar with a lot of your work. Super! <laughs> What's the matter, Eddie? I know everything you've done. Although I'm not familiar with a lot of your work, I've watched the majority of the Inuyasha series. Super. And well, I think... then you're familiar with my work. <laughs> and I think your work on it is brilliant. Thank you. Uh, he is one of my favorite characters, and I'm sure I'd think differently of him if it wasn't for the top-notch voice acting. Ooh, but thank you. the question on my mind for both you and Trevor is, ninjas or pirates? There it is. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to have to go with pirates. Yeah, me too. We're, we're a pirate. We're a pirate household here. We're a pirate nation. <laughs> Pirate One pirate Nation. under God. <laughs> um, our next question. <sighs> yes. This is from Zaid. Just uh -huh. want to say that I enjoy your show and all your crazy guests. It's good for me and others to hear the voices that we grew up with. I'm sure the fans can agree with me when we say this show was a godsend. Ooh, wow, godsend. Wow. Yeah. Having troubles with that. So. That's fine. I got yeah. it figured okay, out. Sorry. It's awesome. It's just my shoddy equipment. No, I listen. Richard all I couldn't did, hear himself. I, I right pulled there. it a little too hard. <laughs> like it happens every once uh, in a that's while. That's true. You got and to be And then it stopped working. So let that be a warning to y'all. <laughs> if you pull it too hard, it'll stop working. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, Zade. Let's get back to your question. Um, big high five and or fist pound to Richard Cox, whatever you roll with. I really enjoy listening to his performances. I think the first time I actually recognized you was in Zoids, and your character was Bit the Crowd. Bit the Crowd. No, it was Bit Cloud. Bit Cloud! <laughs> uh, anyhow, my question is for both of you. All right. 
I have a radio show on my campus, and that gives me good practice with honing my voice acting skills. But I also create the sound effects for my skits. If in front of people, I mime the movement and make the sound to help people visualize it. <laughs> well, me too. That is uh, awesome. Was there any time that the script <laughs> called for you guys to make the sound of the character's action, for example, a gunshot or a punch? <laughs> <laughs> I used to do this bit uh, just for the hell of it. Yeah. <clears throat> and what it was, in Vancouver here, we have uh, a light rail transit system called sure. a SkyTrain. And SkyTrain has a very particular sound to it. It's right, like, right. it almost sounds like uh, shifting gears when you hear it. And I live right next door to the stadium station. Sure. So you can hear it every time it goes by, which is like every five minutes here. But I had this. That is very good. I was sitting down there and I was thinking, what if it was being chased by a TIE fighter? That would have been. So it would be. Oh. Ooh, and then, <laughs> but so so to answer the question, awesome. no, we, I've no. never never had to do the actual sound effects. Uh, no. Certainly, the reaction to the sound effects, sure. like the punch. Well, you know, uh, in live action stuff, uh, it's because I started as a young man, and on Black Stallion, uh, we had lots of fight scenes. Uh, at least once in a Black season. Stallion. Yeah, at least once a season. At <laughs> least once a season. And the rule was, if they were smaller than me, I got my butt kicked, and if they were bigger than me, I beat them for of some course. weird reason. It right. was just a casting thing. Playing the uh, opposite. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, <clears throat> Matt Hill, who is a mm. great voice actor mm-hmm. and who's currently running around uh, the, the continent, continent yeah. because he doesn't have a car. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've told them now they've made the turn they're heading for Florida I said from what I can understand geographically speaking this should be easier because it's downhill um, but uh, he actually came on the show many many years ago on Black Stallion and we actually had a fight scene it was very funny uh, it was a good time uh, and I, I, I believe he beat me up because I believe he's just marginally shorter than me so yes. uh, yeah um, but my problem was is that while we shot they had to go cut okay Richard you can't actually make the sound when you hit them <laughs> Cause and I'm a guy. I was like, that's boy, right. that's what we do, right? Exactly. That's. <laughs> that I'll take him down. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it is such a boy thing because you it you is. never hear girls doing sound effects. No, well, you know, I I do? haven't. I mean, it would I would I'd freak me out a little bit. Sure. The girl doing the sound effects, I would know what to do with it this. It would be awesome. It'd be very strange. Uh, this is from Phil. Hey, Trevor hey, and Richard. Phil. First of all, I have to say I'm a big fan of both of you. And Trevor, I love the show. I listen to most of them, and they're all hilarious. So they thanks are. for what you're doing. Well, thank you, my friend. Uh, any of the, anyway, the question I want to ask is, there's a couple of movies Richard was in yeah. that were small roles. Uh-huh. One was some movie with Robin Williams. Right. Uh, yeah. And another one was crashing in a helicopter in Ghost Rider. Yeah. So Hello. I'm wondering what it was like working on those movies, and would you like to have bigger roles? Since you're probably a better actor than a lot of those Hollywood actors, in quotes. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> also, Richard, you're great in Inuyasha, and I'm sorry for the fangirls asking you to say, Die, Kyoko, in your Inuyasha voice. Kikyo, uh, I think. K- Kikyo, yeah. yeah. No, that's, See, you're this doing is a fine. thing. I don't, I don't speak Japanese. Yeah. Really good. Doing fine. Um, anyway, uh, Trev loved the show, so blah, 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 blah. So, the question is, well, was, um, uh, what was it like working on these movies with these people? And stuff um, like that. It was a lot of fun, you know. Doing off, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I mean, I didn't have a huge role, but it, it wasn't tiny, guys. I mean, come on, like it was a reasonable <laughs> sized role. I mean, I was the whole way through it. Uh, I had fun. It was great. I mean, obviously, I'm a silly guy, uh, but I my silliness pales in comparison to Robin, who who is he's goofy. sort of the the he's the godfather of silly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was a great time, and he was very very nice and very kind. And, and I've heard very, that. Yeah, about him. very very nice guy. Uh, Will Arnett, who's on Arrested Development, who is hysterically funny, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> was great. Um, Jeff Daniels, who was on it, was a really nice guy. And Barry Sonnenfeld, who's actually the, re- the director, uh, was remarkable and just a super, super nice guy to work with. So I, I had a great time working on that film. It was, uh, it was a blast from start to finish. I think I did... You know, six, seven, eight days or whatever it was on it. So you know, a few, you know, a couple weeks uh, worth of work in the actual, you know, uh, reality of it, uh, and that was fun. Yeah, of course, I'd like to have you know a bigger part, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna sniff at it. It was great. Uh, Ghost Rider was fun. It was one day. It was in a studio. It was a reshoot. Uh, they added that in after the fact. Uh, Nick Cage was nowhere to be seen. Um, <laughs> and it was literally in and out. And I sat in a uh, 
in a helicopter as they literally blinded me with with a battery of lights. Look closer to the lights. I can't. I value my corneas. Uh, and we don't uh, pay you to value your corneas. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun too. But you know, it was uh, it was a quick thing, you know, right. on that one. So uh, you know, I definitely would have liked a, a bigger part in that one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this next uh, couple of questions. This is from yeah. Daniela, regular Ooh, listener. Hi, Daniela. How are you? <laughs> she says, first of all, I need another good book recommendation, if you would, from both of you. Oh my. Okay. Uh, also, if you could, oh, this is interesting here. Yeah. Because you just came from doing this. Right. If you could shoot things out of your belly like a Care Bear. <laughs> sure. What would it be? Pizza. And, and well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and what would your Care Bear name be? Pizza Belly. Pizza Face Bear. <laughs> it's a uh, Pizza Bear. Oh, Pizza Face Bear, sir. Uh, <laughs> How are you? I need closure on that anecdote. Um, what would I? What can I? A pizza would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. I would shoot entropy. Now, just wrap oh, your brain around that. Beautiful. Wrap your brain around that. Genius. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, maybe I would shoot uh, uh, truthiness. True truthiness. Yeah, I would shoot some truthiness out of there. Yeah, how about critical thinking? Could you could you actually shoot yeah. critical thinking into people's that heads? That would be super. How but, about critical mass? We'd shoot a bunch of that. bicyclists to annoy people in traffic. <laughs> I'm so going just... as fast as I can. This is my legal right to do so. Sorry, that's a regional joke for those of you in Vancouver. Get out of my way. I have uh, things to do. She wants a book recommendation. Uh, I, I'm okay. looking at one on my shelf right now, which sure. I've just read for the second time. Uh-huh. It's by Bill Bryson called A Short History of Nearly Everything. And Ooh. I think this is a must read for humans. Yeah, good, I think good, it's a good. It's a must read yeah. for human yeah. beings. Any good books lately? Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, I, I installed that virtual bookshelf thing on my Facebook deal, uh, <laughs> and I've got a bunch of, of books that, that I've read. I, I love books. I kind of am a freak about collecting books. Uh, so, I, yeah, I have a few uh, good recommendations. One that I'm reading now is uh, Under the Banner of Heaven or whatever it is. It's mm. the. Uh, it's about uh, the Mormons in, in the United States now and specifically focused around uh, murder. So there's intrigue oh, in there. Wow. And it's a true story. Um, kind of like Witness, but with the Mormons. There you go. Home. There you go. Except they're the ones carrying out the uh, the murder. It was uh, within the Mormon sort of church. There, right. Uh, which is a very good book, John Krakauer. Um, one of my <coughs> all-time favorite books is uh, Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Solzhenitsyn, which is a fantastic book. It's a quick read. And uh, what and last great book to read would be Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane, which is a classic book, very timely mm. now. And a quick uh, fun fact is that Stephen Crane never actually fought in the Civil War. Wow. Uh, he didn't actually ever go to war. So the book is entirely drawn from, I guess, conversations that he would have had, but also from his own imagination right. of the hell of war. I quite enjoyed the adaptation that was done by South Park called The Red Badge of Gayness. I don't know if you <laughs> ever saw that, but it was one of the best episodes I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 It was gold. If you get a chance to watch that episode, fantastic. That is awesome. <clears throat> um, Daniel's brother also has uh, a question here that I'm not going hey, to... Hey, Daniel's um, brother! I'm not going to uh, answer because uh, okay. it's, not, it's not my thing. But you, sure. I think, this is your th- this is right up your oh, alley. Oh, dear. The question is this. Has any actor ever had a bad case of the hic- hiccups or burps or farts during a prelay session? If so, what happens? Does the recording just shut down and everyone has to wait until the spasms stop? <laughs> or does recording <laughs> continue and that actor leaves? <laughs> apparently in shame. Uh, you know what? I was present for one, and uh, the other is folklore, and I don't know if I should talk about either of them. Um, I will. I will say one. Uh, <clears throat> there's a young man who works in the city, who's a great, great, great voice actor. You might know him. He wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> Um, yes. And he might have played a guy named Wolverine. <laughs> or let's just say he played a guy with adamantium skeleton. And uh, when we were doing the record of uh, of X-Men, I was in the studio. I was in actually – I was not in the record booth. I was in the <clears throat> studio. And I was there's a there's a sofa that, that faces the big picture window. And uh, this young uh, unnamed actor whose name rhymes with Bot McBeal <laughs> – <laughs> Had to do a big uh, ramp up sort of react and you know as he does in his brilliant genius 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 way. I know he'll hate me for telling this story, but I know he'll also smile a little bit. Um, and in the middle of this, he put it all into it, and and a little toot came out. And you heard it on the microphone, which was the best part of it. And I was and and if you hear things off mic, this is what it sounds like. So. You know, it was it was brilliant, and I heard it from the other room. And then just to see the faces in the room that were, oh, oh my gosh, he brought it! Oh! 
It was just wonderful. And, you know, it's happened to the best of us, I'm sure, who hasn't been in a gym, you know, exerting a little too hard. And um, and that happens. But uh, And the other is lore. I, and and uh, this one, is, uh, there apparently is a record of this. And I won't say who it is, unless you decide you want to afterward. Uh, there's a guy um, who uh, was recording a show and had to burp, had to stunt burp. <laughs> And decided he was going to down an entire Coca-Cola to aid in such an endeavor. And did. And <clears throat> and it was the biggest, most beautiful, glorious burp right until the end where it got a little wet. And just upchucked all over the stand. And apparently there's a recording of it floating around. Well, it's funny you mentioned both these because they have been mentioned on this show yeah, before. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But- <laughs> And uh, I have still yet to actually run into anybody who yeah. was in the booth with Gary Chalk when he I know, did. me too. You know, and that's but it's such a great story. And if you say it, if you tell him the story, he just starts to laugh. So he, I good, I must have. I gotta have not, him on the show and ask him. Yeah, about that. he won't confirm or deny. So either he just loves the story and it's just a funny, silly story, or you know, or uh, who knows? I, I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's lore, and that's why I say it's like it's a, lore. like an urban legend. Well, totally. I, I'm gonna have him on the show because I just I you need have to. Know. to. He's a yeah. Uh, our next question is from Nancy in South Holland, Illinois. Hey, Nancy. <clears throat> uh, first of all, Mr. Deval, I'm gl- Mr. Deval, please, Mister. please, you call me Master. I'm ba- <laughs> <laughs> call him Pookie. Pookie. He loves Poop it. The pants. It's Pookie. Uh, I'm glad you're back up and adding interviews. I would be. Uh, I would bet that it has uh, developed a life you would never have expected. Yes, that is absolutely true. The show has just gone crazy. Haywire with, uh, for him? Haywire with uh, <laughs> the the popularity has been fantastic. I'm very thankful. Uh, here's my question. When my daughter wanted to lure me into the world of anime, she very cleverly did it by making sure the first show I saw, besides the speed racer of my childhood, uh, <laughs> which uh, I, I really didn't like, was Inuyasha. <clears throat> because... Mm-hmm. Because it was set in a historical time period with which I was a little familiar, since history is my undergrad degree. Has your interest ever been piqued enough while doing a show to spend time reading up on either an era or aspect of the culture depicted? Um, yeah. I just want to know what her overgrad degree was. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what that is. is He's here till Thursday, tip your hey, try the try the veal. <laughs> um... Uh, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I haven't necessarily gone into great depths in terms of researching this stuff, but, you know, online and poking around and looking at the, uh, the wiki world of, of things, the wiki, wacky world of wikis. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm eternally fascinated by half of the stuff we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So um, oops. This is from uh, Colin. Hey, Colin, uh, what's up, yo? What's up? Mr. Hello. Murdoch asking me a question? <laughs> well, that is nice. <clears throat> hello, Trevor. I have to say your last show was great. Colin Murdoch was a fantastic guest and made episode 16 entirely worth the wait. Yes, this is absolutely Colin sending in this question. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> so, kudos to you and Colin. Kudos! Uh, I'd also like to give my compliments to Richard Cox Thank for you. having the mental fortitude to scream the name Kagome God knows how many times and not lose his mind in the process. Well, well I'm not, that's an assumption. I'm, yes, I was about to say I'm not entirely <laughs> certain if that's correct. But uh, Anyway, moving on, I have two questions, one for Richard and one for both of you. My All first right. question is for Mr. Cox. Now what? <clears throat> I don't recall where I heard this, but I remember somebody saying that you were the undisputed... Ki- oh, God. You were the undisputed king of fart noises among the called scatological. Every qu- I knew this would be like the case with him. I knew all the questions would be about this with him. Undisputed king of fart noises among the Vancouver actors, and while in the booth with others, will occasionally try to get them to screw up their lines with said fart noises. I will. Is this true? And if so, can, can we have a demonstration? First of all, absolutely. let me say this is absolutely true, <laughs> as I have been next to him and witnessed this continuous barrage. Of yes, but by all means, do. Tell uh, us. Yeah, no, it is true, and this uh, this started uh, with Matt Hill and I, uh, who sh- the two of us should never be in a room together, to be honest, because it's just crazy. I'm pretty silly with most people, but uh, he brings out the worst in me for sure. And uh, being Ian was just a nightmare for many, many people uh, coming in to do the show. And any exert, any exert somebody does, which would be a <clears throat> idea, we would put a <clears throat> on the end of. Uh, and it was literally just back and forth. Through the two. So, yes, I, I do do them. I enjoy them. My favorite is the quick. <laughs> which is always fun. <laughs> which is just that. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we get it. Thank you. <laughs> and now. But then you've got the two handers. <laughs> which is. You know, that's. I mean, that's a classic. 
And then you've got the full on like sort of something's gone a little wa- a, a little wrong. <laughs> And then there's just the full-on uh, Montezuma's Revenge. <laughs> and there you are. This is, this is what my show has degenerated. <laughs> this is what they're going to be talking about. The whole, I guarantee you, Wonderful. this, that, the, the, everything else will be forgotten. <laughs> It'll all be about that. Politics, schmolitics. <laughs> that guy can fart out his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim Carrey can talk out his ass, but I can fart <laughs> out, out my mouth. mouth. Just like the rest of the candidates for the election. <laughs> um, my second question is for both of you. Yes, sir. Uh, if I'm to believe Wikipedia, then Richard was an instructor at Tarlington Training for quite some time. I was, yes. And I recall Trevor saying he does uh, <laughs> actor workshops as well, mm-hmm. which is true. I was wondering exactly what is it like to help another person actually develop their own acting and performance abilities? What are the challenges, the benefits, and do you ever feel like you've improved yourself in the process? <clears throat> that, uh, too, is from Colin. I, from, for myself, I teach quite a bit. I teach at Vancouver Film School and Cap College and uh, Studio 58 and all over the place. And I often find that I learn more about my own abilities and how to push the envelope by teaching. Uh, Not all the time, but certainly over the course of any given year, I can say that I've probably improved as a voice actor uh, by uh, not only the work I've done in the booth, but also the work I've done teaching. So I, yeah, I think it's, um, it, it, it does help me. And uh, I uh, like to think that it helps uh, them too, to to impart my little bit of knowledge that I have. Yeah, I would totally agree. I I think that, you know, I started teaching when I was 18. Uh, I've stopped now for a little bit. I'm taking a bit of a hiatus, you know, because of family sort of things. Um, And I, and like you said, I I taught at Tarlington training for, for many years. And I started originally with, with VYT and then moved on to Tarlington as Carol moved off. Um, So I, you know, I taught for about 17, 16, 17 years. Um, and, and, and I think that number one, yes, I think that, uh, you improve as an actor because you're forced to put into terms, you know, what it is that you do because, and you hit on it on the second one when you said develop actors abilities, because you can't teach someone to act because that's kind of like teaching them how to, you know, love or hate or, you know, whatever it's, it's, they've got to have it and it's, and it's got to be something that, that you develop with them. Um, and, and I can't really teach you how to do anything other than I can teach you what I do, what works for me, and, and hopefully that will work for you. And I can, you know, teach you how I process things and teach you to process them in the same way. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that it's... Which, which is why it's always important to get multiple uh, absolutely sources right. of, of training. Absolutely right. You know, and, and I, always just, I always just say, look, there's, you know, people will walk around and say, well, I'm sort of a Meisner trained kind of... <laughs> but Meisner never walked around saying, I'm I'm me train you know like he's because you know he sort of put together the way that he saw things you know he came off of uh um 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 um, strasburg and and all of these guys and sort of you know so he walked away from from the actor studio and he kind of went off and did his own thing and and but he came from something went off and and sort of had his own versions of things talked and learned from other people and then sort of, you know, wound up teaching what he believes works for him. And so I think that, and you've, you're absolutely right, and, and I think that you, the only way that you can improve as an, as an actor is to get stuff from all sorts of different sources. And whether that be acting teachers or whether that be, you know, on-the-job sort of training or whether that be watching movies or, or playing with kittens, I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. Absolutely. Playing with kittens and giving them little voices. Oh, they're great. Uh, this next one's from Ashley from Red Deer, Alberta. Hey, Ashley, how's it going, eh? <laughs> I absolutely love the last episode of Voice Print. Not that I don't love all of them, because What about I do. this one? <laughs> Are you not currently <laughs> loving this one? <laughs> Um, she just and, and I can't wait to hear the next one which would be this one so there you go she head, you. heads you off the pass there um, and, but, 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 and anyway I'm rather getting rather strange looks from my parents because of my uncontrollable laughter all thanks to your show well that's very good that is good. Um, <clears throat> I just bought the live action Death Note movie and I have to say that everyone in Vancouver did an amazing job being a big Gundam Seed fan I also loved your role as Moo thank you and Richards as Tolle 
Koenig. There you go. Toll Koenig. Uh, yeah, Toll that's Koenig. right. They couldn't have cast better. Uh, that's the other guy along there, with There Shani. it is. There we go. Cool. Um, question for the both of us. Mm-hmm. Being heavily involved in music in high school, I've had to record my voice dozens of times, and after listening to the recordings, I often ask myself, is that really what I sound like? No. Do you ever find it odd to hear your voice come out of a character's mouth or ask yourself <laughs> if you really do sound that way? Just curious. Uh, you know, I've heard my voice now come out of a bunch of different mouths. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, you get used to it. The first couple of times, you're like, "Wow, is, it, whoa, is that me? Was that me? That was me. Oh, okay, that was me." Uh, but now I'm, I'm reasonably uh, uh, okay with it. I still get freaked out by what it sounds like on my own answering machine. I think mm. I sound like a, you know, mm. a knob. I always feel like when I, even when I'm editing this show and I'm listening back to it, and I think I listen to my voice, which is just this one right now. Sure. Uh, which Great I, voice. Which I try, I, try, I try not to use it as much as I can. Right. <clears throat> but I listen to this voice, and every time I hear it, I think. I think he's a bit gay. I th- I think, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think yeah, he's like, no, no, he sounds a bit you. gay, doesn't he? I hear you. He's a bit gay. I, I hear. Well, in regards to my own voice, I, I always think, you know, I sound sort of more deep and manly than that, but I don't. And I <laughs> have this weird kind of, you know, like, I mean, I guess when I go on there and I do the thing, you know, mm. and, and then maybe it comes down a little bit or whatever it is. But but no, my normal actual speaking voice is a little uh, nerdy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, but the people on IMDB, on them, I've noticed on their boards, they're talking right. about how sexy his voice is. Oh, my God, well, it's so sexy. I think that's because it's it's the Inuyasha sort of add a little rasp. A little rasp can do wonders, guys. If you want to sound cooler for, you know, that on-the-phone sort of sexy talk with your significant other, add a bit of rasp. Not too much, though. You'll choke on your own spit, and it'll hurt a little bit in the morning. But every good night should hurt a little bit in the morning. Exactly. Ah, boy, many questions. Moving on now. Going into jolly old England. This ah. one from Rick Cole in England. Hello, so Rick. <clears throat> How from the you? county of England in the town of Englandshire. Wonderful. <laughs> in the it's county a of England. Mm. And yes. I love it. <laughs> anyway, um, God, Richard, you've got so many questions here. I've got to cut to the last one, I think. Right. Um, right. Are any of them about ferrets? Yeah, they all are. I'm trying to cut those out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one's about a blancmange. Okay. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> How bizarre. I haven't heard that reference that in a is long the absolute time. Best Monty Python episode ever. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Oh, I've got the whole I've got the right. Flying Circus on DVD. My of absolute course. favorite one was uh all of the people in Northern England were uh, all of the people in England was were, were suddenly turning into Scotsmen and were running north. And the whole reason was because uh alien blamanges wanted to win Wimbledon and everyone knows that Scotsmen can't play tennis. Which I think think they'll find is quite wrong considering that Mr. Andy Murray is doing awfully well these days. So there you are. A blamond reference. Anyway, all for you, Mr. Rick Cole. There of are, England, Mr. Cole. England, um, England shot. <laughs> Lovely place. A so, bit drizzly, but wonderful. So, um, first of all, uh, if you were uh, having a party and you were able to invite, uh, I'll keep it to one famous figure, dead or alive, who would you invite and why? Uh, Gandhi, because I hear he's a bit of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, any number. You know what, Dean Martin, oh, because yeah. Dean Martin cracked me up. Yeah, uh, he cracked me up, I, and I would always be up late, you know, in my youth, you know, writing something stupid and preposterous and really, you know, yeah. lamentable. <laughs> uh, and so the the ads for the Dean Martin roasts would always come on, and yeah. I always wanted to buy them. They were some of the funniest <clears throat> things ever, and he had his own variety show yes. uh, many years ago, and it's the single funniest variety show ever on television. I agree with you completely. I, yeah. We're of the same generation in terms of that, and mm-hmm. uh, I had the exact same experience yeah. growing up. Dean Martin, also Carol Burnett and Friends. Oh, Carol Burnett was uh, wonderful. Just Har- okay. uh, Harvey Corman and you know all yeah. those guys. That, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, Dean Martin would be a would be a hell of a fun time. And uh, since I like a bit of a thesaurus. (laughs) There you go. Well, then you guys got that going on. Also, he wants to hear um, you do one of Inuyasha's lines in a Welsh accent because uh, he's heard that you are in fact uh, Welsh. Well then, um, I don't know. What would I say? Uh, Kagome! That's about about all I have, really. Um, I'll tell you a funny story about my family in Wales. Uh, they're wonderful people, and I love them dearly. And and uh, my second cousin is a guy named Wynn. 
uh, um, and he uh, he runs the family shop, Shop Hughes and Doug Etley. And uh, Shop Hughes has been in the family for 150 years. It's celebrating its anniversary uh, a couple of years ago now. And uh, we'd gone back a few years ago to... Uh, you know, for a bit of a visit, and so I, you know, I brought my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife and mother of my children, and and uh, we saw Win, and, and he says to me, he starts <coughs> telling me this story uh, at my uncle's house at this party that he was having, and uh, so he tells me this story about this budgie, you know, and about his sister, and you know, her letting the door open, and all this sort of thing, and then we got interrupted, and somebody came up and said, Richard, you really must meet, you know, so and so, and off I went, and I never heard the story, but the end of the story. And we went back to Canada, and a few year, a few months later, sadly, my nine or my grandmother passed away, and so I had to go back to Wales. And I went back, and it was a very solemn event, and we sort of laid her to rest. And and then later at the uh, at the party at my, you know, and well, not party, but you know, yeah. uh, tea and cakes, and you know, and all that. Uh, back at my uncle's house, all these people were coming up and saying, "I'm very sorry," you know. And, He's a wonderful lady and I'm very sorry that she's gone and sorry, sorry, sorry. And, and Wynn comes up in a very sort of dour face amongst all the others and he says to me, Richard, I never finished my story about the budgie. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, that's my family, really. And that's Wales, I think, is you know, I think you'll find. You know, for a man who's who is setting about to celebrate the shop, the family shop's 150th anniversary, time stands still, isn't it? It doesn't matter, you know, months go on in the middle. It's fine, you carry on the conversation, you know, next time you see them. So there you are. That's for Wayne, that's for my that's family, gold. and that's a bit of Welsh, you know. <laughs> that's gold. All right, we've got to move on here. We're quickly, right, here we quickly go. becoming uh, in danger of, of becoming the longest voice for an All episode right. ever here. Beyond even Scott McNeil. Good so. Lord! <laughs> that is ridiculous. All okay. right, this is Brain again. A question from Brain. Brain! Whose real name is Brian, but he spells it Brain, Hello, you understand? Hello, Brain, Brain. Uh, Hello. The question is for both of us. Yes. What kind of toothbrush do you use? I will answer. Uh, not the one I scrub the toilet with. Right. There you go. I I use a sharp and stick. <laughs> that has been frayed enough. What about a pointed stick? <laughs> a pointed stick. Is it frayed enough? Just enough to give me some bristles. <laughs> All right. This Not is, some uh... Brussels. That's totally different. <laughs> this is uh, from Shelley from Port Perry. Hey, Shelley. Um, How's uh, it going? She says, thank the heavens you're still alive. It's good to know my death note is fake. Oh, wait, you wrote down 2215, so we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> uh, yeah, signing of the death note, that's a... I get that quite often thing. as well. <clears throat> um, all right. We all write the same thing. And 20 million and five in his sleep. <laughs> uh, the highlight of my day was you doing the quote of Ranma ordering a pizza so many thanks no no problem and Trevor who uh, you know we all adore and love for doing this podcast let's give them all a round of applause Yay! Oh, thank you thank you um, well that's <coughs> an answering to the other guy's question do you ever do your own sound effects in the middle of a record <laughs> yes that just happened that's right although you're not actually supposed to ever clap sorry ever, clap, clap, ever. Clap, clap, yes clap, exactly clap, 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 clap. <laughs> uh, so questions um, yes um, 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 I'm gonna have to just she's got three I'm gonna have to keep it to one because we're right. sort of running out of time right uh, so do you ever dress up for Halloween no uh, I used to as a kid I loved it and yeah. now I just find it silly uh, I do not dress up for Halloween I haven't for many years I did when I was a child obviously free candy awesome Yeah. Uh, but now I'm an adult I buy it um, <laughs> I don't actually I haven't eaten candy in a year so uh, this is making me a little nervous about you know uh, mm. Halloween coming up because mm -hmm. I, I lost 50 pounds this year uh, right yeah 50 50 I lost a backstreet boy um, <laughs> no just kidding I lost Paris <laughs> Paris Hilton and half of Nikki <laughs> went away. That's awesome. Nothing sexier than chicks who look like emaciated 12-year-old boys. Do you find me hot? No, I don't. I really don't. Um, what if I puke in this car? Yeah, that'd be, that would be rad. Um, I'm not wearing panties. Maybe you should. Maybe you want to put those on. That would help you out a lot. Uh, so, no, you know, and I think that the thing is, is that they all go, oh, you're an actor. You should love dressing up. And I'm like, yeah, but if they had a day for like, everyone be an accountant today, would you, would accountants sharpen their number twos and just get ready to go? No, they'd be like, screw this. I'm going to watch some TV and exactly. order Halloween, a pizza. Halloween is like the one actor's day off. Yeah, it's like, I ain't doing this. You do it. See how hard it is. Now try to get paid. <laughs> okay. 
Um, hi, Trevor. My name's Rena, and I just got into your podcast a couple of months ago, but I absolutely love it. I think it was a brilliant idea to come up with one voice actor interviewing another voice actor. Well, thank you. I tend to think it was a rather good idea, too. <coughs> um, <laughs> um, there has been some amazing dubbing going on for Motion Studios in the past couple of years, and uh, a lot of the shows are some of my favorite dubs of all time. Uh, as a fan of your work and other Canadian actors here, I just want to say what a great show you've put together time after time, and I can't wait for the next podcast. Well, thank you very much. Um, my question for the both of you is this. Because the manga took so long uh, to finally come to an end with 500 and something chapters, mm -hmm. um, and this is any Asha she's talking about. Okay. Uh, I was quite satisfied with the ending for it. Whereas the anime really didn't do too much with a clo uh, with a with a closer, uh, nor did it go anywhere. It left a huge gap open with Naruku uh, being alive, the Shikon jewel not being completed, and no kiss or anything from any Asha and Kagome. And I'm sure that that's what a lot of us were hoping was going to happen. So, right. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on the ending of any Asha as an anime? Um, did you like it or not like it? How it ended? Could it have? Uh, could could it have changed in any way? And uh, what was it like to work at a project uh, like that with actors as equally talented as as, the, as you two, uh, though you couldn't be with each other in the same room? So first of all, <laughs> what are your thoughts uh, on the ending of Inuyasha? I think it was very Soprano esque, which uh, I haven't seen yet. So shut up! Don't say what. Right, right. No, it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I, I think that maybe there could be closure. I think the reason that there di they, they didn't have the closure was there's always talk of maybe going ahead and doing more. Uh, so I think that's maybe why it didn't quite have the closure that it could have had. Uh, I would, yeah, I mean, I would have liked to have seen perhaps a little bit of resolution. And then, hey, you could have picked up beyond that. I think that Inuyasha and Kagome... Uh, well, I don't know. People always ask me that. Who's uh, Kagome or Kikyo? And I think, why not both? Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, honestly, why not? Uh, one's technically dead. So uh, you're good there. You know, I don't think legally you've broken any laws. Right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, I like that it's. I, I like that it was open because I did want to come back and do more. Now that we know that we're not going to do more... Uh, yeah, I kind of wish I, that there was an ending. Now yeah, that it was a little bit of closure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. And what about um, uh, what's it like to work on a project with actors? Is well, obviously. I mean, awesome. it's great. It's so great. It's I just, super awesome. Any chance I get to work with a guy like Richard Cox, even oh, though man. I only really started talking to him this year as a person. <laughs> 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 You're no one until you've talked on Facebook. Uh, I, it's great, and you know, and uh, and luckily, Trevor and I, uh, as of late, have had quite a few opportunities to work together. Yes, it has been a pleasure. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure, Mister Duvall. Well, it's I been it's... rather, rather entertaining working with you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and I don't say that to just any guest on this show. Thank you. Very I say much. that to all of them. <laughs> oh, excellent! Well, I feel <laughs> no, very, it is like the Geronimo very Stilton thing. Sort of, you know. He's very nice. You're a very funny guy. Oh, really. thank you. No, you're funny. No, you are a funny guy. You are you're funny <laughs> in the way that you speak in the funny way. <laughs> I right. like that. We're on to the last couple here. This yeah. one is from Maddie St. Pierre in Newfoundland. I'd Newfoundland. Like, I'd like to know that there's some guys out there in Newfoundland. Thank you, my son. Thank you, my son. So, <clears throat> dear Trevor. Newfoundland. Love your, <laughs> love your podcast. They rock. Two questions for you and Richard. One yes. for Richard. Yes. If Inuyasha were to somehow be reanimated, yeah. would you voice it? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Number two. Trevor, can you ask Martin... Well, why don't I get you to ask him through me, Matty? Trevor, can you ask Martin from YTV if Bionics will return to Fridays and uh, if more anime will be on? All right. Hey, Martin! Martin will Bionics be return on to YTV on Friday? There I'm sure go. that uh, I will. It, it will be asked and it will be answered. Uh, so stay tuned, Matty. In an upcoming episode, you'll hear your question when Richard says... <laughs> Booyakasha! <laughs> That's next week on Voice Print. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the studio. Okay. Um, this last one is from a uh, long-standing listener, Melissa. You should sit down, Melissa. Good good grief. How long have you been standing? <laughs> 17 episodes. Good Lord. <laughs> hey, Richard. Hey. First, I would like to say it was great seeing you at Fan Expo back in August. And well, I would like you. to thank you for the shout-out to my group, uh, uh, Voice Actor Whores. On, hey, um, shout-out to voice actor people who <laughs> sleep around a little bit too much the, for money. The fans who were not able to make it to the con to see you really appreciate it. Uh, the, my question has a bit of a backstory. My brother was watching RV on the movie network one day, and uh -huh. I happened to come down and uh, see a very familiar face. Uh -huh. I stared for a moment, saying, I know who that is. 
Wait a minute. I run up to my room That's to my Robin computer. That's Robin Williams! <laughs> <laughs> standing and, next to Richard uh, Cox. Standing next to Richard Cox, exactly. So I would like to know, what was it like working with Robin Williams? Uh, we sort of talked about this yeah, a little bit absolutely, uh, before. Yeah. It was awesome. <clears throat> um, on, a, on a professional level, what was he like? Uh, it was great. You know, he was... Uh... It was great. I mean, he's he's an absolute professional, a total consummate professional. He was uh, giving as an actor, uh, you know. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. I had a lot of fun, and as I said, those a great group of people, and I and I really really enjoyed myself. Yeah. He has uh, made it a habit of when he's up here doing a film to mm -hmm. pop down to the local comedy club, sure, and, yeah. and jump up on For stage, free, yeah. do a set, and that uh, I'm still hoping to catch one of those because I grew up with him he's being like my idol. He yeah, was yeah, for in sure. The late seventies when he was uh, really doing the whacked out comedy, like reality, what a concept! Yeah, I think yeah, that was yeah, a seventy seven yeah, yeah. album. <clears throat> Loved, it. just like grew up with him. Just him and Monty Python, they were my two biggest huge. comedy influences. Absolutely huge, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mork and Mindy and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and you know all of the stuff that like him, him carrying on from Jonathan Winters and sort of you know going that wacky sort of yeah. out there kind of hey ha 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 yeah, yeah kind stream of, of consciousness and, stuff is great. Yeah. Um, anyway, that about brings us to the end of our show, and we have officially now broken nice. the record. You have now broken nice. Scott McNeil's record. Nice. So, there you go. I feel very proud. <clears throat> well, you should. Um, so, um, a few little announcements uh, before we go. First of all, I am quite serious about that voice print uh, at cons thing. If you guys want me to come down to a convention in a city near you, then by all means, write your local um, convention people. <laughs> and ask them to ask me to come uh, because I'd love to go down there. I'd love to take the show on the road again. It would be great, like I said, to go down to Houston or something and do a voice print episode as part of a panel in a convention with Monica Rial or, or uh, Lucy Christian or anybody like that because um, uh, I, I love all our colleagues down there and I'd love to get a chance to get them on the show. And the only way I can do that is if I <clears throat> go to a convention where they're going to be at. So you guys are way more in the know about this kind of stuff than I am. So if you have any ideas about uh, conventions you'd like voice print to go to and guests you'd like me to have on the show, by all means, um, write your uh, write your convention people. Your <laughs> write, your <laughs> write your local authorities. Write your local authorities. Our next guest on the show is going to be Mr. Lee Toka. Ooh, who is, uh, that'll be a good one. Very talented man who's uh, done all kinds of cartoons uh, and I've worked with on a number of things as well as uh, written uh, with him. So he's sort of a writing partner of mine. He's going to be the next uh, guest on the show. Uh, but for now, that brings us to a climactic end of Voice Print with Trevor Val and guest episode... 17, Richard, look like Super. you want to say something? I want to say something really quickly. Uh, you guys can, because I'm too cheap to have an actual website. <laughs> you guys can, uh, you know, look me up on uh, on the Facebook, on the group pages, uh, under the mostly official Richard Cox page. Uh, I'd like to talk to anybody and everybody, and uh, that'll be up and running very, very shortly. So please do. Please do check me out. The mostly official Richard Ian Cox group. Uh, I, I'd like to answer your questions and say hi and stuff <laughs> and that's all I have to say it's been a pleasure sir thank, thank you, you very for much. coming on the show it thank was you. great to have you thank you and uh, we'll see you in the studio I guess <laughs> oh, this, be great. Uh, this has been Voice Break with Trevor DeVal and guests I am your intrepid host at Trevor DeVal and I will see you on the flip side